up everybody, Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. Now before I can begin this video, I just want to mention that I've been getting a lot of comments and questions recently about how to use an inversion table and kind of some of the effects of using an inversion table and is it worth getting or purchasing or going through inversion therapy treatments if you're someone that has a disc bulge or disc herniation. So, for the purpose of this video, what I'm going to be covering today is how to specifically use an inversion table, just some sp basic steps on how to use one if you're not someone that has ever used one or isn't sure how it works, as well as I'll share with you some of my, some of the things that I went through in terms of a, re a recovery methods when I had my disc bulge, some of the things that I did with regards to using uh, an inversion table, as well as some little, as well as some additional tips that I'll also share as well. So to begin, just want to mention that the whole purpose of using an inversion table is to kind of decompress the spine. So what ends up happening is by decompressing the spine, you're allowing for more, you're creating more space, you're extending the spine, and potentially allowing the disc to heal, and you're taking that compression or pressure off maybe that nerve root that that disc may be impinging or bulging and hitting. So I'll get into that a little bit more later and how it exactly works, but first I just want to mention how this specifically works. So this is the Teeter NXT that I have here. And now I'm not sponsored by them in any way. So this is just the inversion table that I have. It's a good quality one. I really enjoy using it. I really like it uh, as opposed to a lot of the other ones that I've tried out. It's just a better quality one, but typically they're all the same. They're all producing the same effects. So how the inversion table works is what you first have is typically you'll find a lever here and specifically with this inversion table with teeter here so this lever here is going to be adjusted based on your height so someone that is longer is going to want to extend that someone that's shorter it would be much shorter now there's different kind of settings here that state uh, what you should put at for your height so there's instructions right there simple and easy to use and kind of just figure out yourself so in terms of that so if you look at me i'm six five i'm going to need a longer lever for this in terms of using this properly. Now how this works is it's basically like just a teeter-totter if you think. So whatever side you apply more weight or force to, that's the side that's going to go downwards. So when you get on the table, the weight's going to shift. So what ends up happening now as I step into the inversion table here is you have an ankle lock here. So this basically ankle lock is just going to kind of keep you strapped in. It's going to prevent you from falling out when you hang upside down. So all you do is you pull the pin adjust it to the size of your ankles or whatnot and then you just kind of lock yourself in so it prevents you from falling out. Now you have two handles here that you can just kind of hold on to and kind of help you maneuver or pick yourself up when you're upside down. So all you're going to do now is lean back. So as you lean back now, now the weight is going to start to shift. And so now you can see I'm at a basically a supine position where I'm laying flat. And the further I go down now, I start creating that traction, that kind of spinal traction or that sort of stretch with my lower back. So the further I go down, the more stretch I get. So this is going to allow for more decompression the further I go down. And so now I'm all the way in a position of where I'm hanging upside down. And this is going to, this position here is going to create the greatest stretch and decompression on that lumbar spine, which would ultimately be beneficial for most people with someone with a disc bulge or disc herniation. Now someone who's a beginner or is, isn't familiar with an, an inversion table or has never used one before, now they typically or probably are not going to want to go full tilt upside down right away, so they don't want to swing back and go all the way down. Just because you may not be used to hanging upside down, you may not be comfortable with that yet, or you just aren't used to the kind of the blood flow that is going to your head, which typically can cause you make you maybe a little dizzy or nauseated. And so one tip for anyone that is actually hanging upside down to kind of maybe alleviate some of that pressure that's being kind of built up in the head is to kind of tuck your chin in. So kind of flex your neck and tuck your chin in and just sit in this position. That'll kind of reduce some of the blood flow going to your head so you're not getting that drastic kind of full pump of blood rush to your head and you can kind of maybe hold yourself in that position a little bit longer. Now for a beginner though, like I mentioned, you might you might, might not be comfortable going full tilt. Like you, you probably aren't going to be comfortable going full tilt upside down. So you just want to start slowly, just kind of slowly moving downwards and maybe holding a position like this where you're still getting 
a slight traction stretch on your spine. And it's not in a position where you may not be super uncomfortable or it's something that over time you can kind of get used to and slowly kind of progress downwards as you kind of adapt and get more comfortable with using the table if you're someone that has never used it before. So that's just kind of the simple steps on how to use a table. And then as I get out, I just kind of unlock the pin and I step out. In terms of setting up these inversion tables as well, I just want to mention they're pretty simple. I mean, this one, there's only a few pieces. You got, it, become, it, be, it comes together partially assembled, so there's only a few pieces. you got to put together a few screws. It takes maybe This one took me about 20 minutes to kind of put together. Real simple, and it has all these instructions, which are really easy to follow in terms of setting it up. Now, in terms of how to use this and some of the things that I did for my recovery, in terms of in reducing that disc bulge and kind of making a recovery, so what I would specifically do is when I had severe pain and when I first started using this, I would use this at least at the minimum, probably about three times a day. Typically I'd go somewhere maybe morning, afternoon, night. Usually the afternoon sessions I'd maybe have maybe two to three sessions or maybe even up, or maybe even four or five. Kind of would depend, but that was, the reason for that was because let's say I was out, if I wanted to go out somewhere and it required me to do an activity like sitting. If I was out like for a social event with friends, having to go out for a few drinks or going to see a movie, or whatever it may be where it required me to be sitting in a position. So when you're sitting like that, you're getting that constant compression on the spine. So you become very compressed. And what ends up happening is when you go on this table and you hang upside down for a couple minutes, you're creating that decompression. So now everything's opening up. So if you think when you're sitting, everything's kind of getting squished together, then when you hang upside down, everything's becoming unloading because you're not, because of the effects of gravity. So now you're kind of changing those effects of gravity where you're hanging upside down now. So ultimately doing that though, would number one would help with pain relief. So if I was sitting there for a while, whatever, going on here would just provide pain relief. And I think maybe it would help maybe in terms of avoiding having to take medications, painkillers or whatever it may be but also it would help with the recovery as well because what would end up, what I would do afterwards is I would go on this for a couple minutes and then I would go afterwards and kind of put a couple, I would lay on the ground but put a couple pillows under my hips. And the reason I put a couple pillows is just to kind of keep me out of the hyperextended position. And so then I can just kind of sit in a position where I'm not in any pain. I have no stress placed on the collagen fibers of my spinal discs, so therefore I could potentially allow for my body to respond physiologically to start getting more nutrients getting to that spinal disc. So I allow for more nutrients to move to the spinal disc. You get a better diffusion of nutrients potentially occurring because now you're, once you get off this inversion table, your spine is becoming more extended. So the key thing that I want to mention is that we have our normal walking height, normal walking height, kind of jumping height. And over time, as we age, the more wear and tear on our spine, our spine typically will get, we will start to shrink and we will start to kind of lose our original height. And that's just due to our spinal disc becoming, uh, they're shrinking and that's due to a lot of the wear and tear we place on our spine over time. However, by going on this inversion table, it relieves all that compression that we have. And so we create that decompression and now we're returning to our original height. So as soon as we hang upside down for a couple minutes and we get off of it, you may feel like you're a little bit taller. And the reason why you'll feel like you're a little bit taller is because you actually are a little bit taller. You're extending your spine because of all that decompression that's occurring. Everything is kind of elongating now. And so now the key thing is in terms of recovery, and this is what I did, is as soon as I used this, I would immediately go to the floor. I'd immediately lay on the floor. Like I mentioned, put a couple pillows underneath, but I would immediately do it. And the reason I'd immediately do it is because if we were to go on here for a couple of minutes and then walk around for 10, 20 minutes, whatever it may be, from walking around for 20 minutes or sitting for a few minutes, we start creating that compression again. And by us creating that compression, we begin to re return to our, uh, our walking height that we normally have when we're kind of moving around and whatnot. So therefore, we're not getting those same effects when we lie down if we would kind of delay that process. So that's why I found it important to go on here for a couple minutes and then within a, like maybe a minute or two, whatever, have your thing set up and then lay on the ground because now you're getting into that position. So you're laying by laying on the ground, you're not getting any stress onto your spine. 
and you're in that elongated position, which could potentially allow for that more nutrients, kind of a, a greater fusion of nutrients to the spinal discs that may be that that may be herniated or bulged or whatever it may be, which could potentially maybe speed up the recovery. Now I'd also throw a heat pack on there as well onto my back, just to help kind of allow for more blood flow to get to that area. You have a greater circulation, and so if you get more blood form blood flow to the area, potentially more nutrients can go to the spinal disc and help maybe repair those damaged collagen fibers or whatever it may be. So that was kind of the makeup of my recovery, and I would do that on a daily basis uh, throughout when I had my severe pain, severe back issues. And that's what I found was the biggest thing in terms, one of the biggest things in terms of getting better. Now there's research to support inversion therapy and using an inversion table as well. There isn't a lot of research, but there's, I feel like there's enough, there's, there's still, I feel like there still needs to be more research done, but there's a good amount out there to support this. But the, the key thing is though, is that just using a version table alone will not make your back really much better. It needs to become, it needs to be combined with other kind of rehab methods as well. So like I said, combining the inversion table with lying on the ground. So when you combine the inversion table with lying on the ground and putting a heat back, so you think about it, you, when you're lying on the ground like that on your stomach, you're putting yourself in a position where you're not placing stress on your back. So you're allowing things to heal, adding the heat back in, which is something that you may commonly see within physical therapy, which they may just throw a heat back on you, but it'll help with maybe getting more blood flow to the region. And you also combine it with other physical therapy methods, with, uh, for instance, strengthening your core, developing core stability, throughout maybe addressing hip mobility issues, or some of the hip, hip mobility issues, doing massage and tissue work, which may help with uh, certain tight muscles. By releasing them, it could help as well. So the key thing is, is that you need to combine everything together. It's not just one thing that's going to heal your back. It's a whole process and everything needs to be taken serious because not just one thing will really make it better. It needs to be a whole integrated process in order to make the most quickest and efficient recovery possible. So that's what I did. Now it took time, it took a lot of time, but if you stay consistent with it, I'm telling you, you sh should get better. Now I'm saying you should because I'm I can't I don't want to make any guarantees or promises, but that's just basically how things work for me. And if you're someone that's watching this video, I hope you kind of take some of this information and hopefully you can maybe apply it to yourself and see if it works for you. If all else has failed. And so for that, guys. Um, also, in just terms of using the inversion table, I would only use it like if you use it for a couple minutes. So I would hang upside down for maybe two to three minutes, or maybe hang upside down for a minute, come back up, go back down for a minute, come back up, go back down for a minute. Kind of take little breaks if I was getting maybe a little nauseated or kind of dizzy. That's what, that's one thing you can do. You don't just kind of hang in that position for three minutes straight. You can come back up, just kind of take a break, let kind of the blood flow back down your body, and then go back down again to kind of create that decompression. So the guys, that's just, just some of my tips regarding on how to use an inversion table in terms of make for a in terms of for making a recovery from a disc injury from a disc injury like a disc bulge or disc herniation. And those are just kind of simple steps on how to some basic steps on how to use it. So my tips in terms of what I did for my recovery and how I specifically benefited from it. Now with regards to today, I don't I'm not as strict as I once was because I feel like I don't need to. And I've made the recovery, but I still use this uh, in terms of uh, just helping uh, kind of decompress my spine because I do find it just still feels good going on there and kind of taking a lot of pressure off my back. I'll specifically use it, you know, like I mentioned, if I'm doing activity like sitting or if I went to the gym and worked out, I'll do this kind of post activity or maybe before I go to bed or whatever the case may be. So guys, that's just kind of it for today's video. Um, something I just wanted to kind of talk about and share with you guys because I know a lot of people have been asking me, is it worth getting an inversion table? What do you suggest? This and that. And so this is why I kind of wanted to make this video. Now I'll do also do a follow up video where I'll kind of talk about an integrated approach to overcoming a disc bulge or a disc herniation, specifically like a posterior one in the low back. Because <clears throat> this is, that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand, but within that video I'll try to cover, you know, I'll talk about inversion therapy, I'll talk about combining with laying on the ground. I'll talk about nutrition a little bit, touching on how your diet could affect 
uh, your body physiologically in terms of healing uh, a damaged disc or and also I'll talk about kind of uh, core strengthening how important core strengthening as well developing core stability where you maybe where you have maybe have some instability issues and how core stability is going to benefit you in terms of preventing future injuries from occurring so I'll kind of put a video together where I touch on everything and kind of have an integrated approach to overcoming a disc ball disc herniation because I know a disc any sort of disc injury that is you know causing you a lot of pain it can severely affect your life and I know that because I went through it and it was one of the worst experiences of my life just going through constant pain not being able to sleep not being able to do activities not being able to go out and do all the things that I enjoy and I know a lot of people out there typically don't know much about how to overcome this injury or they've had a lot of failed attempts or failed approaches with regards to maybe chiropractic care, physical therapy care, massage therapy or with doctors, whatever it may be, and they're getting all these injections or surgery, which ultimately is what you kind of want to avoid. And so for that, I hope this video is informative to you guys and you guys take something away from it and you're able to kind of just learn something about um, how to use an inversion table and how it can be beneficial to you if you're someone that was unsure about it or isn't sure how it works. And so for that guys, I'll kind of leave it at that for this video. If you have any questions now, please be sure to leave them below and you know, I'll be happy to answer your questions or comments or whatever you may have. And for that guys, I uh, wish you guys a successful and a productive day and all the best. Take care.